Well, just to begin with, I spend an awful lot of time reading both of these authors. Um, personally, uh, I tend to be a bigger fan of Chomsky than I am of Foucault, uh, in no small part because I think his linguistic theories are revolutionary uh, in their implications, uh, and also because I think I'm a kind of creamy, dreamy rationalist uh, at heart. Uh, so that's kind of where on the spectrum I end up lying. Uh, on the other hand, I do think that there are substantial problems uh, with the approach that Chomsky sometimes takes to politics, uh, which is to dissociate it from things like broader ideological critique, appeals to affect and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's where I think Foucault is a lot stronger uh, in analyzing the different ways various forms of subjectivity can be constituted, the discourses that they tend to involve themselves in, uh, and all the stuff that I'm sure that will come up here. Uh, I watched this debate a long, long time ago, I should say. I think it must have been in like the second or third year of my undergraduate degree. Uh, and one of my professors pointed out that you can also really see the difference in academic cultures between France and the United States by looking at them. Because you saw Chomsky, you know, and he was dressed in a nice enough suit. And, you know, he's kind of there looking a bit like a Tweedy, you know, MIT, Harvard type dude. Uh, but then there was Michel Foucault, who looked like he was just made for TV. You know what I mean? You know, the coiffed head, you know, the elegant gestures, you know, speaking very pointedly about everything. Uh, and I was like, well, what do you mean by that? He's like, well, it's the difference between academics in France and academics in the United States. Academics in the United States through the Vietnam War, pretty much widely hated. Uh, academics in France are basically mini celebrities. Uh, and no one was a bigger one than Foucault at that time. And I was like, oh, Jesus, I'd like the fucking celebrity treatment at one point, you know? <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm coming from it. <laughs> I don't want to say a plague on both of their houses because I actually um, really uh, find uh, useful and, in, and I mean, in some instances, revolutionary thought in, in both of them. I don't know if I would if I would pick one over the other, but, you know, coming more from the continental side of things myself, my first impulse is almost to to side with Foucault, but then also as somebody who works in in psychoanalysis, um, Marxism, um, I'm despite uh, you know coming from I come from literary studies and and uh, the past thirty years or longer has been uh, like the main paradigm has been heavily Foucauldian, and so mm -hmm. to have gone through graduate school in in literary studies anytime before, you know, 2010, you would have been, uh, I mean, it varies from program to program, but you would have been steeped in this sort of Foucauldian um, historicism. Having said that, so I think theoretically, I'm actually more, uh, you know, aligned with, with, with Foucault, even though I have a lot of, a lot of problems with him, but, but politically, and we'll see this, uh, I think that ultimately, um, politically, I'm, much clo more closely aligned with 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 Chomsky, so it's a weird <laughs> it's a weird position where theoretically I think Foucault has a bit of the upper hand, but politically I think that even though Foucault says that he is a leftist, I think that Foucault has been in large part, um, or maybe like Foucaultianism has been in large part responsible for a sort of attenuation of of not so much political commitment, but of a focus on the political as such especially in the, in the academy of the past, like 30, 40 years. So that's, that's sort of my preamble about this. Yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. Sorry. Go, go on. No, no I just want to say uh, one of the unfortunate um, realities of the situation is that uh, we've had decades and decades of Chomsky uh, where we can kind of mince his political positions, get a good sense of how they've evolved and changed over time. Uh, I really think the best was yet to come for Foucault when he tragically passed away uh, far too young, uh, especially because I think the kind of, left Nietzschean uh, expressivism that you really find in his later works, uh, you know, where he starts to talk about how it is that, you know, we can engage in projects of self-creation was very interesting. Uh, sadly, he passed away before he ever really gave us a systematic work uh, in the vein of that project. So we have to kind of fill in the blanks there. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, actually a lot of what both of you said resonates with me. Um, you know, I mean, I, th I think Chomsky, you know, Chomsky is certainly somebody who, who politically, you know, I, I think is right about, about just about everything. Uh, I, I did a, you know, certainly I think all the most important topics that, that he's, that he's tackled from his sort of bread and butter stuff about the, you know, day-to-day -day evils of capitalism and imperialism to, um, to, to things that are maybe a little bit further out on the edge, like, like his, his defense, even within the left of free speech. Um, 
I think most of my critique of Chomsky politically isn't about what he does say, but about what he doesn't say, you know, about, about the things that I think are important that are left out of his projects. Um, and Foucault, yeah, I think there's some ambiguity there uh, politically uh, because, uh, you know, certainly there were times in his life when, when he was, uh, in, you know, I mean, he was embracing a very, you know, radical, you know, left kind of, kind of message. Uh, I think there's some ambiguities about that, you know, uh, especially especially later in his career. And I, I, I do agree with some of what Russ says about the um, about the way that um, that his influence, you know, has has not always been benign, you know, especially you know in in academia. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, as far as philosophical style, you know, I've, I've already admitted to uh, to be, you know, well, actually, let's put it this way: to combine the the question of philosophical style with what Matt brought up originally about uh, personal style, uh, I I think that. I, I think about this often, you know, that like I, I'm in the slightly odd position as, as somebody who does still have a day job as an academic that um, that I really, you know, I'm an analytic philosophy nerd, as I mentioned earlier. Right. You mm -hmm. know, like, like I really like that stuff. Uh, but I absolutely hate most academic philosophers, like, you know, cause, cause, cause most of them are like annoying dweebs who like, you know, prefer Elizabeth Warren to Bernie Sanders and, you know, and, and, and are, are, obsessed with civility and, and are woke in exactly the wrong ways and, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are like, there are like 10 people who, who do, who do this, who I actually like, uh, and, and I'll just leave it at that. So we can guess about whether they're in the 10. Uh, so, uh, so I think certainly in terms of style of doing philosophy, I mean, obviously Chomsky is, you know, much, much closer to, uh, to where, where I come from. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll just say this before we start, uh, something that, that has always made me laugh, uh, since learning it is that apparently Chomsky, as far as I know, uh, you know, being a square was paid in money, uh, for this debate, whereas, uh, whereas Foucault demanded that, uh, the organizers pay him in hash. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, then for, you know, for a while afterwards, uh, you know, every time that he and his friends would smoke it, they'd say, oh, it's time to break out the Chomsky hash. <laughs> You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>